Welcome you to a very special break in on Russ's time here. We have we're having a killer time here with Kathy Wade and also with John Morris Russell. We are here to talk about the crown jewels of jazz. Kathy, John, thank you for coming back in with us to talk about some of the great things going on here in Cincinnati. Thanks, George. Good morning, and it is great to see you. I mean, it's been a it's been it's a few been a years, long time. Right? I've yeah. got more gray hair now. No. Than <laughs> You're looking great, man. So it is a delight to have you both in here because we've been featuring every week the crown jewels of jazz. Mm-hmm. Kathy has joined us by phone last week was a great concert despite the rain and everything tia fuller was in town this one is a little bit different from the season good pavilion performances Mm -hmm. this one's going to be at the corinthian baptist church and it's going to be on thursday night this particular week Mm -hmm. and kathy and john tell us a little bit about what people can hear at this wonderful free concert made possible by learning through art well first let me just say we're so excited to have this partnership once again with the cso pop through the Brady Neighborhood Concert Series, we decided to collaborate. We did this last year, and it worked out really, really well. And uh, you know, and, and playing music in Bond Hill, one yes. of the great Cincinnati neighborhoods, yes, absolutely. And uh, we were outside last yeah, right. year, and the sound of, of the freeway, you know, just yes. kept on getting in the way. So we thought we wanted wanted to get into a holy music space, and so there we are. <laughs> we're going to be there at, at uh, Corinthian Baptist, right outside on the grounds, and you know, you can drive down the lateral and see us. And pull on over and enjoy the music. So, so 6.30 on Thursday. 6.30 to 8.30 mm-hmm. p.m. And this is going to be, now we heard at the very beginning of the show, and I didn't introduce her. She was due to be with us today, but she had a flight delay. But she will be here tomorrow evening. And that is Diane Monroe. Yes. And she is a jazz violinist. We yes. heard her just with a little clip with Tony Maselli. Mm-hmm. And we'll hear a little bit of her at the end of the interview here today. Mm-hmm. And she is a champion. Uh, I'm so looking forward to eventually meeting meeting this lady. Uh, She is a champion for wellness and music, which is something we believe in very strongly here. Mm -hmm. She's coming in from Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Kathy, you just bring in the big (laughs) big hitters. Big guns, eh? You've got, first of all, getting JMR up at this hour of the morning. (laughs) Thank you. I don't know if I can take credit for that, but thank you. But you really do. You've brought in some wonderful people. Tia Fuller last yes. week uh, joining us. Mm-hmm. And you've also got more coming up yes. with the crown jewels of jazz yes. as this goes on. But what can people expect tomorrow night? Because it's going to be Diane Munro. Mm-hmm. You're going to be singing, yes. of course. Kathy yes. Wade, one of our first ladies of song in the, in the Midwest and the country. And, of course, the incomparable John uh, Morris Russell with the CSO Pops. This is going to be a wonderful wonderful evening and it's free yeah this it is is. Wonderful. And, uh, and this was so much fun to put together this program yeah. with kathy because you know you you, you put out a, a great theme like great women of jazz yes mm-hmm. uh and you know br- bringing in diane you know yeah. a jazz violinist yes it's a great touch point for creativity in in figuring out what types of tunes you're going to play and the musical stories that, that you're going to be telling absolutely i tell you what i have so much respect for a jazz violinist oh, yeah. i've was raised, uh, you know, playing big band. I, right. I played trumpet mm-hmm. uh, in band and jazz. And you know, you swing on the trumpet, and you know, it's it's kind of it's it's kind of like breathing. It's an extension of, of singing. And when I decided I, I wanted to go into conducting, I decided I was going to, you know, I, I needed to learn how to play the violin. Mm-hmm. So I, I just started taking Suzuki lessons when I was right. in my twenties, and. To just do some sight reading to get myself up, I'd bring out my real book, right? Which we, we has all, all the you know, <laughs> the we, we, swing we, stuff, we, all the jazz tunes I knew and loved. I just I just sight read them, and the weird thing was, it's really tough to swing on a violin. Yes. I mean, it, you know, it's so natural when you're just kind of breathing or singing, but if you have to use an extension of your arm and a bow mm-hmm. to make this thing swing, it is really difficult. And anyone who can make that violin swing. Man, that is an exceptional artist. And so uh, we're kind of going back in time. She's going to be performing uh, a piece by Maurice Ravel uh, called Blues from his Violin Sonata, which has been orchestrated for full orchestra. But it's got all these swinging rhythm in them. Mm -hmm. Maurice Ravel knew what time it was, right? (laughs) Uh, But he got into jazz because... Right after the First World War, there are so many black American soldiers who were playing jazz in the Paris clubs at Mm -hmm. the time, including James Reese Europe, 
who uh, was uh, the band director of the Harlem Hellfighters, <laughs> and he had this jazz band. And Maurice Ravel was listening to him in the clubs and was just like all of a sudden ha- uh, had this great awakening to American musical traditions, mm-hmm. African American musical mm-hmm. traditions, and kind of like changed the way the world l- listens to music. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have to say I- exactly what JMR just said. Her technique. I was watching a video of her doing uh, Night in Tunisia yesterday, and my mouth was on the floor because, you know, it's Night in Tunisia. <laughs> yeah, <you> know, <laughs> and it's swinging. Yeah, yeah. This is Dizzy's tune, and, right. and, and, and she makes it work, work on the fiddle. I love collaborating on these mm-hmm. concerts because our Cincinnati Pops repertoire, our playbook, is very, very deep. We've got these charts arranged by Tommy Newsome and, you know, all, 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 all sorts of heavies. Uh, something like uh, uh, Take the A-Train, right? And so what we can do is they have these solo sections written in. So we've got someone like Diane coming in and we say, hey, take a verse, right? right. So there are lots of different pieces that she's going to be able to play with us uh, just to be able to improvise and, and to add her own voice. I think, I think the piece I'm most excited about is this piece by Mary Lou Williams, yes. the great jazz pianist. Yes. And uh, it's called the Zodiac Suite, and she wrote it for orchestra and like jazz ensemble. And it really hasn't been performed that much. It was performed once in New York in, in the mid-40s and then just kind of put away. And mm. recently it's kind of been musicologists have, have rediscovered it and printed out a new set of parts. But there are all these like little holes throughout the piece that Mary Lou Williams would just kind of improvise around. She didn't need to write it in. You know, it's like Mozart never wrote any cadenzas, you know, because he <laughs> just improvised them, right? <laughs> so instead of having, you know, the, the, these holes that the piano is supposed to kind of fill in, Diane is going to be coming in and doing that as well. So oh. we're kind of making a, a, a fresh work of this. And I cannot tell enough. And, you know, especially women of jazz, right? Yeah. I mean, Mary Lou Williams, yes. I mean, just one of the great unsung heroes of, of American jazz music. Mm-hmm. There she was, right arrangements for Basie and Ellington. I mean, she worked with all the heavies as an arranger and conductor. And she was also a music theorist. Mm. I just like to say that. That's right. She's a theorist. She, you just um, elevated our overall <laughs> classiness by right. about fifty percent. Right. I mean, I mean, jazz theory is really sophisticated. All the yes. extended harmonies and substitutions and, and all the rest. And she would give lessons, but she gave lessons to like everyone. Mm-hmm. She she was giving lessons to to everyone from Charlie Parker to Miles Davis. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was known as the Nadia Boulanger of jazz. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she taught jazz music theory to all right. the greats mm-hmm. and laid the foundation for, you know, much of the music of the uh, latter 20th century. That's incredible. You know, one of the things I'm excited about this, I my producer is is Bill Cunliffe, a Grammy Award oh. winning uh, arranger. Right, he's mm. going to be here. He actually studied with Mary Lou Williams. <gasps> no way! Yes, yes. Oh, I, there I you was go. Eh? Like, oh my God, this is full circle. <laughs> well, so, I still remember Bill Cunliffe playing at the Greenwich Tavern. Oh my near. God! Yes. We recorded him and yes. did him live for the, another station. I was with. Absolutely. So, so an, another great thing about Bill's presence here is that he's created a couple of fresh new yes. arrangements for the Pops and Kathy on a, on a couple of her tunes yeah. and. You you know, we were just talking about his charts, and they're just gorgeous, they really Lush. beautifully oh. done for, oh, yes. for orchestra. And again, homecoming. kind of, you know, adding to this great jazz playbook of the Cincinnati Pops. Yeah. Absolutely. When he said to me, when he found out I was going to be doing this again, he found out about it last year, but it was after the fact. He called me up and he said, I see you're doing this, and I just want to... I want to do two arrangements for you. Do you mind? I'm like, okay, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> yes. I'll take yeah. it. So we picked um, The Nearness of You and then oh. an original tune that I wrote with Ted McConnell called Spice of Life, which is a blues tune. And oh, just and that's to a hear good one. Blues with a pops <laughs> orchestra. You got to hear the wow. blues, the strings, the yeah. strings. Oh, my God. So I've been running around in my car just singing my butt off and screaming. And, well, this is going to be great. And then I got to see the rest of the program, and I'm thinking, this is going to be so fabulous. Yeah. So, Let's give the details, and we're going to come back to JMR and Kathy Wade here because this is a big deal, and it's a free event. This is part of the Crown Jewels of Jazz Mm -hmm. happening every week in July. And again, this is going to be tomorrow evening. That's Thursday, July 14th, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. in Bond Hill at the Corinthian Baptist Church. And it's free. It's free. Free. Absolutely Music for free. the people. Free. Between 4 and 6.30, there's lots of activities where we want you to come in and, you know, meet 
vendors and people in the neighborhood and services it's, and it's things like that. It's a great family. Fabulous, it and is. it's a great family it concert is. for families who want to introduce their kids to orchestral music, to American music, mm -hmm. to jazz, mm -hmm. to great artistry. Mm -hmm. And it's really inspirational. And it is so much fun to look out. We've done a couple of these Brady concerts so far mm -hmm. in, in, in Westwood, in uh, uh, Price Hill, and we continue to do them throughout the summer. But to look out at all the families and yeah. the kids, th there'll always be those families who come up and, you know, the, the kids will look up and shake your hand after, after the concert, you know. Yeah. And I'll always ask them, what is your favorite instrument? And they'll always say, you know, it's the violin or it's the drums or it's the saxophone. And to know that this is a great touchstone, a great Cincinnati tradition yeah. of passing these great musical traditions from one generation to the next. And it's these types of concerts that open those musical doors to, to families and kids of all ages. I totally agree. It's one of the reasons why we always try to, every year when we do Crown Jewels of Jazz, we try to find a theme because the idea is that you need to see yourself on stage. I mean, J.M.R. Right. can speak to this. If you don't see yourself, you don't know that you can do that. So we are always very keen when we're selecting our artists for Crown Jewels of Jazz series to make sure that everybody is seeing themselves on that stage so that you know you have an entree point. And yes, you can do this, and it's here for you to do. And for all of those uh, families who either have youngsters in Suzuki or training in string instruments, you have to see, and I'm not sure if Diane's going to have both with her tomorrow, but she plays the traditional violin. Yes. But you have to see what I call the apple core violin or that jazz fusion violin it's a unique shape. There are a few artists who are playing this, but it's a really funky looking violin. <laughs> and it's an electric violin, I right. take it, versus the acoustic. But it is tremendous. And you're going to be fascinated just to see the instruments if she brings them both. If not, you can look her up online and you'll see that incredible violin. What a great combination. You have the original musical <laughs> instrument. And I didn't mean age-wise, but the original musical <laughs> instrument. Oh. I'm in trouble now. Good morning, George. <laughs> <laughs> the original okay. musical instrument, which is the human voice. And that's Kathy Wade uh, will be performing that. You know what I mean. So. So, and then you've got this incredible violin with the backing of the CSO Pops. This is uh, right. just and, tremendous. And, and, and we have a, a very special guest joining yes. us with, with the Pops as well, Rick Van the Mader. The, oh, my uh, goodness. The, the incredible sax player. But you know what? Our Pop Tet, you know, with Julie Spangler, mm -hmm. Mark Wolfley on drums, yeah. Roger Klug on guitar. I mean, they are all awesome they and uh, every time we, we get to swing with great jazz players i mean it's just so much fun it is it's the versatility fun. that both of you bring to this is just amazing to me <laughs> and you. kathy i know for you it's wonderful to be ensconced with all this great backing oh, as yes. opposed to maybe a combo or a trio yes, behind you i feel like i should I, I told jmr last year after we did finish the show I feel as though I should have strings following me everywhere I go, so that when I speak, I have my full orchestration. Just... <laughs> and then, John, for your group, it, it basically allows you to open up and play things that you might not be able to play in some other performances. Well, what, what you always like to do is, is have guest artists mm -hmm. that help you take everything to the next level. Yes. And working with Diane Monroe and her great improvisational mm -hmm. skills. And, you know, it, it, she'll she'll bring to, to something like, like this piece by Maurice Ravel, right? You know, she's going to bring something that a, a strictly classical player is, is not going to be able to bring to the table. I mean, you know, uh, here's Ravel writing this piece, you know, wanting to imitate the sound of blues. Well, by God, she has lived the blues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and she's going to be able to bring that to Ma Maurice Ravel to take that piece to to a whole nother level. You're going to be so turned on by this that you're going to become unraveled. <laughs> or no, unraveled. Uh, Sorry. Uh, I, I had to get one in. I had to get one in. So, <laughs> Kathy, tell me about Learning Through Art. For those who might have missed some of our earlier oh, conversations, sure. Learning Through too. Art is celebrating its 30th, 30th year. 30th anniversary. That's wow. tremendous. It is. Thank you so much. We have been dedicated for 30 years to building resilient communities through art. And it's been a wonderful experience. It, it, it's just been inspirational, but it's also been very, it's been well supported by this community, not just funders, but just audience and being able to touch children. One of our biggest programs is our Books Alive for 
Kids program mm-hmm. where we make books come alive through sight, sound, and touch. You read a book, you make a craft. And then there's a show, and I have to do this shameless, shameless plug. Please. Uh, <laughs> last year, we ended up with four Emmy nominations and finally won one for Best Children's Ooh, uh, wonderful. Programming. And then this year, uh, we opened up the book and got the announcement, and we have five nominations for a show that True we did, yes. um, a black anthology of music, The Resilience of Jazz, which we produced during last year for our Story Quote project about truth and reconciliation around social mm-hmm. justice, uh, racism, systemic racism. And we decided to take jazz as that idiom, how it has been resilient. You can look at jazz mm. and parallel the framing of America by just tracing the history of jazz. And to be able to take that and understand how that music still survives, it is here, it's not going anywhere, but it has it reflects our history while it still gives us the purpose that we need to have to be resilient and continue to go forward and fight whatever ills there are out, out there. So to be able to do that with art in general is a great opportunity, and it's highly inspirational for us. And, you know, I'm going to throw some in here as well. I, you, know, you, you think of the black music experience mm-hmm. expressed through jazz, which has infused everything Absolutely. that we call America. Yes. yes. Right? Yes. It's part uh, of the family. And, you know, it, it's, yes. it's, it's like apple pie. It mm-hmm. is. It's everywhere. It is. And it defines us. You know, you, you listen to the music of Broadway. It's got it in there. Mm-hmm. You know, you listen to the music of bluegrass, mm-hmm. country western. Mm-hmm. It's in there. Mm-hmm. Of rock and roll. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And how. Right. It's the very DNA mm-hmm. of American music. And, and of all of the art forms that, that we are known for in, uh, as Americans throughout the world. Jazz. Jazz defines us. Absolutely. It, it, it's the music of democracy. It, it, it is. I always say to people, jazz is America's classical music. Yes, it you is. To own it, live up to it, and appreciate it. So that's one of the reasons I, we partner with Jazz Alive, which is Laura Gentry, my producing partner. And that's one of the things we, were, we always find ourselves talking about. I, I rely heavily on Laura's opinion about who we need to bring, which is how we ended up with <laughs> Diane Monroe. Right. She, we were looking at Regina Carter and, you know, after COVID, it was just hard to get people booked. So oh, Diane well, Monroe's name came up and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that's yeah, great. Yeah, fantastic. You know? And, and uh, Regina, we wouldn't be able to get her next time. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> She's fan- fantastic she as well. Is, right. Yeah, yeah. But again, there are so many great there players are. out there right. that, that, that we have the opportunity to, to celebrate. And this is why I admire you, Kathy, so much, <laughs> is that uh, with the with the Crown Jewels, is that every year there are these incredible artists yeah. that come here and yep. are doing free concerts, you yeah. know, Washington Park or, or, or wherever. Yeah. It really raises the, the ethos of, of our community. I agree. And, you know, as, as our orchestra, you know, presents our Brady series of neighborhood concert series, mm-hmm. it's it's about bringing music to the people. Exactly. And, and this is a great thing about summertime. Mm-hmm. And in so many neighborhoods throughout our city, we are bringing music to celebrate mm-hmm. both the music, but also to celebrate the communities in which we serve. Yeah. And, you know, of, of course, it's going to be Bond Hill mm-hmm. uh, in the middle of the week on, on Saturday. The orchestra is going to be going to the West End it's and really uh, performing in, in Laurel Park. And again, it's a celebration of ourselves. Uh, if, for, for that concert, we're going to be celebrating the music that was performed at the Cotton Club, you know, which is which is now, <laughs> you know, the foundations of which are underneath I-75. Right, right. Uh, uh, <laughs> right. And, and we're also going to be c- celebrating Mamie Smith, the great blues singer who who called Cincinnati her, oh. her, her, her home. So, so many wonderful musical traditions that we celebrate here in Cincinnati. And it's, it's fantastic to, to work with you, Kathy, Thank you. and to bring this to life here on, uh, on Thursday at Corinthian. Baptist Church. I, I do have to be fully transparent. I not only work in Bond Hill, our offices are at St. Aloysius. I also live in Bond Hill. So part of this is just kind of coming out to our neighborhood and bringing the neighborhood out to enjoy and see. And once again, it is about seeing yourself on a stage, seeing yourself do something that you need to know you can do this. And inspiring youngsters. Absolutely. Young men and women who can do this and and understand what is happening. But the crown jewels of jazz, especially this year, celebrating women of jazz, which is tremendous. We're down to our final couple of minutes here. We want to make sure that you know where this is and what's going on. And we thank the incredible team, Laura and Carissa and everybody for helping to make this happen. (laughs) And Kathy for helping to corral this. But it's part of the Andrew J. Brady Neighborhood Concert Series Mm -hmm. and part of the Crown Jewels of Jazz. It's the only evening that's not a Wednesday for one of these events. This is Thursday, July 14th. That's tomorrow night. 
6.30 to 8.30 p.m., Corinthian Baptist Church in Bond Hill. That would make it a common Bond Hill for yes. for Kathy here. <laughs> and uh, jazz violinist Diane Monroe, Kathy Wade on the vocals, the CSO Pops represented there with John Morris Russell. It's free. You get and all this great. talent. You, you know what? Yeah. I, yeah. I'd come out. I'd pay for this. You know, and, and, I'd pay a lot for this. I mean, and the weather's going to be fantastic. It's, be gorgeous. it's, be, it's yes. really, really, uh, it's really at, that's the wink of God night. there. Yeah, it so, uh, so it folks, is. come on out. You know, and there's it, free parking. Yeah. So Mercy has been very kind, and they're opening their parking lot to us. So just Wonderful. pull in. Bring uh, your picnic. Bring, bring your a lawn family, chair. Bring a lawn chair. Please bring a lawn chair. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and come out early and meet the vendors Yo, and meet the folks from the neighbors. Oh, oh, absolutely. Oh. And yes, dancing is permitted. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. In fact, encouraged. In fact, last year we oh, had yeah. a dancer. Oh, oh, we yeah. had a there's a swing dance group, and they sure. called and said, "Do you mind if we come?" I thought, "Oh my God, come on out!" So we have them yeah. on film and everything. Yeah, no, that's yeah. great. Come and dance. Well, yeah, come on out, move, uh, or if you just want to sit and listen and enjoy. Yes. But yeah, dancers definitely welcome. In fact, encouraged. Encouraged. So, very good. <laughs> Kathy Wade, John Morris Russell. George, thank you thank both you. so much. We love having you both here. And I know JMR, it's been a while. Kathy's been on with us uh, here and there uh, yeah. over the last few years, yeah. and great. it is great. You know, once great. again, find the details, and again, it's a free event, Thursday, July 14th, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m., but there's all kind of pre-festivities. You can find up more information. If you miss this and you're driving, call the station. We'll get it to you, but it's LTA. 30th.com. Mm-hmm. That stands for Learning Through Art mm-hmm. 30th. Dot com. Yes. If you just type in learning through art, you'll It'll find it as well. Absolutely. But it's a wonderful thing. John, <laughs> thank Kathy, you. thank you so much for thank coming for in at an us. early hour, and we greatly appreciate your time. And thank you for all you do and for being part of that fabric of Cincinnati. Thanks, thank George. You. Thank you. We're going to play just a little bit here of Diane Monroe as I turn around here. This is Sometimes I Feel Like a Motherless Child. And we're going to send it back to Russ here. <laughs> 